Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Charles from Channel Books on Stereo, and I have a special guest. I have the Taji. If you haven't watched your videos, I don't know what you're doing. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, what's the book called Kiss and Don't Tell mm -hmm. by Megan Quinn. This one was narrated by Jason Clark and Vanessa Edwin. So we won't get into spoilers. We'll save that for the end, but we will be talking about the audiobook as well. But first initial thoughts, what did you think, Taji, of the story? Well, I was hesitant to, because I haven't read anything by Me Megan Quinn. Okay. So I was really hesitant to go. And I was like, what has Charles gotten me into over here? <laughs> so I was like dragging my feet. And then I read the little blurb. So I, got, I, I, I punked myself because I read the little blurb and I saw five hockey players and, you know, one girl. And I was like, what? This is, we got a menage? Is this a reverse? <laughs> I knew you were going to think it's a reverse harem. But for people who have not, don't know anything about this book. Quick synopsis is a group of like five hockey players are at their retreat. This random girl shows up in a storm. Her car is like basically in a ditch and mm -hmm. she needs shelter for the night. And so by the synopsis, it makes you think it could the be a reverse harem. Says, five hockey players, a cabin in the woods and little old me. I was like, Charles, <laughs> the spice. I was like, all right, let me get into it. And then as I started reading, I was like, wait, Right. And even like in the first little bit, like you have like different POVs from all the different players that are kind of giving you a contact. So I was like, wait, but I have to say that like just overall really quickly, this is for me like a nice palate cleanser book. For me, it was mm -hmm. like low angst. It was mm -hmm. like slow burn, straight to the point, relationship building, trust building those kinds of things. And so it was very sweet and it was very like, like I said, low angst. And I appreciated that because it can't always be, you know, like high drama all the time. So I felt like mm -hmm. for that, I felt like it was very sweet and it was good. You yeah, think? I would say for the story, I didn't expect it to be a slow burn as I thought. I mean, like this is slow. Yeah. I mean, probably not like until- three quarters of the way through before- Yeah, that they actually you know, get something happens. Yeah. And I get why that choice was made for that specific couple. Right. But then on the other hand, I don't know if Megan Quinn actually announced this, but it seems like a setup to a new series. That's what I felt. So like you I have felt. like yeah. the other hockey players, you have a max, well, a potential like LGBT romance. Yeah. And when you have Catherine. Yeah. Her crazy you have style. so many other characters yeah. that like, I was really struggling on how to rate it because like I enjoy all the characters, but I felt like a lot of emphasis wasn't put on the two main couples love story. Right. Like I saw the third act, like whatever, like yeah. breakup, whatever that was going to happen. I was like, I the called it like, yeah. it was like so obvious. I was like, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who has read it, but it's very obvious. It follows a very like stereotypical romance plot, it which is not bad. Formulaic. Yeah. But I think that's a good question to talk about the characters because I enjoyed all of the characters so much, which is so rare mm -hmm. to find in romance. You have Max and Catherine, her best friends. I love that. And they're actually present. Yeah. And they also have the hockey players. I can't remember all their names, but like you have the one that like didn't like the heroine. You have the other two. There was I know it's Hater. There was Halsey. There was Pacey. Hater. There was um what was the other one? Those are the ones that I remember for sure. I Halsey, know there was Stefan, the cook. Stefan is right, the cook. Halsey was the one that like got like had a previous. Was it Holmes or Hall or, or Holmes? I thought it was Tater, right? There was a character named Tater, right? Or like There's Tater. A Tater, Holmes, Halsey, Stefan, Pacey, See, and Posey. Yeah. And wasn't there a Posey? Posey. Right. Yeah. That's it. And so, you know, what's really interesting, and I'm glad that you said that, because I felt like at some point as I was reading, I was like, did Charles throw me into a series that's already been going? And there's other <laughs> books. Because I felt like there was a pre-story that I was missing because I felt like I just got thrown into it. So I kept going back to Goodreads going, you know, and I looked at her like books, you know, there's that website that are like mm -hmm. read books in series or in order. So I was mm -hmm. checking to see like if there were other books because I felt like I got thrown into the middle of a story that I should have already known the context of all the different characters. Mm -hmm. And either that, or there's more to the story. Like you said, she's setting it up for those, all those other characters to have their own individual books that are sort of maybe an interconnected plot, but they're standalone, you know, novels. So. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I just noticed with a lot of her backlist titles, like her college football series. Mm -hmm. So if you look those up, they're not actually listed as a series, but you can tell by the covers that that they're all in a series together. So I think that's what she's doing Mm -hmm. is that they're all standalones. But then you can easily, if you find the character that you really enjoy, they'll probably be getting their book. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully soon. But I feel like as a fan, you have to recognize like, oh, I know that character from this book and this connection, because I don't think she's going to be blatantly obvious. Right. With the characters, which I actually kind of like, Mm -hmm. because then it reduces the thing where you see like an author's like backlist, you're like, I have to read all 30 books to understand all the connections. Like this one, you could just go in. You get all the characters, and that's why I love you get so many of the other characters' perspectives. Like, you get to know the hockey players, mm-hmm. her best friends, her, like, Josh, her ex-boyfriend yeah. in this case. I was like, yeah. I was like, I he really, I really like this. His, his arc and his own, even though we didn't get to hear about his arc, but his development mm-hmm. is, was really interesting, and I would want to hear what happens with him, and I'd want to see him have an HEA somewhere. And Catherine's story and her anxiety and how her sort of, it came out in very funny ways, but it's like, you know, it's a legit real issue that like, you know, that Max kind of held Catherine together. So hearing what that dynamic is like, and it'd be interesting if like Max gets his book first and that leaves Catherine and how she sort of spirals and having her sort of, you know, um, her counterpart helping her to get grounded and be more balanced so it definitely there's more to tell and the other thing I think with Megan Quinn which I'm not familiar with her but once we did get the spice it was spicy like I was loving their dynamic I liked his interaction it was like a little bit of kink but not too crazy like it was like you know it's just perfect it was really really good and how she responded to him you know, and the things that he did and what that dynamic was like, but it just wasn't, it wasn't on page a lot there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I recommend it. That's why I said, like, let's read this book. Cause I knew I read Megan Quinn before mm-hmm. and she's like the rom commie, but like when the steam hits, mm-hmm. she hits, like it hits. It hits. But like, I, yeah, you, she doesn't give you a lot of it, but when she does, you're just like, that's all right. I don't need much. You know what I mean? So it was given. Yeah, I feel like this good. was like a more different book because of what the heroine was dealing with. So mm-hmm. like the hero, like just like, that's why I was so interested. I was like, I want to like lodge a complaint that I wanted more steam from this book, but I don't think it would have made sense because our heroine mm-hmm. is very like skittish when it comes to relationships. True. So if Pacey just went full press and like yeah. went and just like tried to drive a real home really quickly, I don't think it would have worked. Like she would have been like, oh, no, 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 run mm-hmm. away. It's mm-hmm. like, I just like the first meeting scene that they have when she goes into the cabin and then all five of the guys are like, is she here to kill us? I'm like, you're mm-hmm. five hockey players. <laughs> like the humor in this book was just absolutely amazing. Like humor is so hard. Remember, like, the ditch scene? Where I was um... just going to say that. Yes, that was hilarious. I was laughing out loud when she was like, see you later, sucker. Like, it, was, it was so good. Oh, no, but do you remember when they're, like, first pushing out the car out of the ditch and then making, like, sex noise? Yes, yes, <laughs> He's yes. like, can you stop? Exactly. He's like, what? No. <laughs> it was definitely, so the humor on page was really good for sure. They did a really good job mm-hmm. with that. But that scene, because I thought for the longest time, I thought like she really wasn't going to steal this trophy back. And like, it was all like metaphor and she wasn't going to do it, but she was like all in. And then I was like, wait, how did we get to talk about breast milk? I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> the fact when she walked in, she's like, when, when her uncle says, like, please take off your shoes. And she's like, oh, no. It's like, that's a complication to me running out. <laughs> Just she the company, but, she shoes. Was, but she was committed. He was like, where are your shoes? She's like, listen, it was a, it was a well, like, was it, price that had to be paid. <laughs> she's like, and when he's like, do you want milk or water? Both. I'm like, and the breastfeed, I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. And he's just like, oh, Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But you know, like, but, but, but aside for like, so it was a nice balance of complex issues and as well as like the romance between them and mental health issues and trust at like, at one point I was like, 
like you said, she was skittish and she was worried about a lot of things, her self-esteem. I was like, girl, you got to get your self-esteem together. But Megan did a nice job of allowing, it was a good example of how your partner enhances you. Like she didn't rely on mm -hmm. him to make her feel better about herself. I never liked that because you don't need your partner to make you feel better. You have to do that yourself. But he kind of showed her the path and helped mm -hmm. her and encouraged her in a very healthy way for her to get her legs under her and to find her confidence. And that I thought was like a really nice representation. Yeah, and I just appreciate just their relationship development, even though drama does occur and never got to point where I'm like, oh, eye roll. Like, why are they acting juvenile? What When, especially, I'm not gonna say the spoiler yet because we haven't gotten there yet, but when things happen towards the end, I was really surprised about how Megan handled that. I was mm -hmm. like, ooh. I was like, I really like, I really like the way she handled that. Yeah. Like it didn't fall into like very stereotypical tropes that you see in romance. Mm -hmm. Whereas like typically miscommunication. I love that these characters, everything felt in line with the characters. Yeah. And I love that. Cause I think this is one of the things that I love about the romance genre when you get a book where you can actually remember all the side characters because mm -hmm. I think that's rare a lot of times I read romance series I'm like wait who's this mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. they were the someone's sister mm -hmm. I I completely don't remember I don't even think you were on the page mm -hmm. barely in the previous book mm -hmm. so I love that she created and that's why I think it was a little bit longer too as well because mm -hmm. you get to spend a lot of time with other characters yeah. and that does detract from the romance yeah but it's just weird because like it doesn't sound like a series like you don't see a book two coming out mm -hmm. but it feels clearly like there's a lot of setup yeah. here yeah and you don't I know think... when the next book is coming yeah I think that like she hasn't said it but you know for sure that it's like you know I feel like in a couple of months or in six months or something we'll hear about like a second book because it's she she just left it too open for that and you're mm -hmm. right each of the characters had their own voice but it didn't overshadow other characters you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like their supporting roles were necessary to the overall storyline and the development of the story. And so I think that that's why they stand out in your mind because we needed each of these characters because they had specific roles and specific things that they did that were necessary mm -hmm. to tell the overall story. And so Megan did a really good job. And I found that I wasn't confused and I wasn't like trying to figure out if anything, I was more like I need to. And I think it was Holmes, the reader, the one that was like the like he spent most of his time reading and like because he was recovering from the previous breakup or his previous breakup and he was really down. I really wanted to know what that story was. And I really wanted to know what happened to him and how that all like went. That was down. with Sarah, right? Sarah was a see, like that's the thing. Like I read so many books and if I can remember character names, you're it's amazing. A testament to, it's a testament to the writing. Yeah. For like sure. She writes really quickly. I think like she just had, so Kiss and Don't Tell came out like maybe a month ago. And then she had the Highland Fling come out from wow. Montlake, from Amazon a couple months. So like wow. she publishes. She's quick. Really I quick. I went to her website, like I was saying, like when I was trying to figure out like, is there other books in the series? And like, you know, where are we? I looked and I was like, she puts out books. Like there's a lot, mm -hmm. like she's got a huge backlist. So, you know, this is definitely an author that I would try out again and would definitely like try a, some other of her series because I really liked her writing style. And so, you know, I know what to expect now that we're going to have a little bit of a slower buildup, but it's more natural. And to your earlier point, there wasn't the artificial angst that I always complain about the stuff mm -hmm. where it's like the miscommunication. And even in this story, when there was that third act conflict, you know, the characters were able to step back and realistically be like, I jumped to conclusions. I probably should have stopped. I should have had this, but I was mad in the moment. And like, and that's all legitimate as opposed to like this, like, I'm never going to speak to you again. And like, and it's all your fault. And I'm not going to take any responsibility for my stuff and my mm -hmm. behaviors. And I feel like a, that happens a lot where it's like a lot of po finger pointing without going, well, wait, I'm t I need to take some in this too. And so that's my biggest pet peeve with, with some, some of the romance novels that are out there, the contemporary romance novels. Mm -hmm. And I think before we dive into spoilers, let's talk a little bit about the audiobook narrator. So this one was narrated by Jason Clark and I believe Vanessa Edwin. Yes. And I thought the audiobook was fantastic. Like I would not, I don't think I would have enjoyed the book as much if it wasn't for the audiobook narrators. 
it makes a difference. And Jason Clark is like the minute you hear his voice, you can hone in on like he did the Kingmaker series by mm-hmm. Kennedy Ryan. So there's a number he's done, he's done some Lauren Blakely books. I think he's on, I haven't listened to it yet, but when I checked him, he also is on Gianna Darling's The Fallen Men, those new series, he narrates those as well. So we get familiar with these narrators. We really like the sound of their voice and they lend a lot to the story. And so when you hear like, okay, it's Jason Clark, you're like, all right, you know, it's going to be decent. You know, it's Mm going to be really good. Now the female narrator, I'm not sure her voice is familiar, but I didn't go back and check to see what other things she has done. She's um, popular. I know she does <laughs> Ava Harrison a lot. Anna Zares. So like oh. she's popular too. She's popular too. Okay. Like, I Megan Anna- Quinn got like really high tier narrators for this. And you know, and that's not cheap. So the no. fact like, oh, I'm looking at it. And she did Vanessa, she did The Brit by Jody Ellen, Malpass, mm-hmm. and a couple of the Corinne Michaels books. Yeah. She's so, amazing. And Rena Kent. Yeah, the whole like that, that whole uh, the throne duet series, Rena Kent mm-hmm. series, that dark um, bully romance. Yeah, so there, so she's like you said, top tier as well. Yeah. So like, now I feel like we can get into the spoilers. Okay. So, what did you think about Josh's arc? Because I really, I really enjoyed it that the fact that he had cancer and what he did, I was like, I get it. I get why you did what you did. It sucks that you did that. Yeah, but I get it. But I love that they could have like that mature moment between those two characters. Right. I just loved it. I loved it. And how it played with like her and like um, Winnie and Pacey's dynamic when he saw. Mm -hmm. I love how like she actually put together. I'm like, wait, she's like, they look very similar. They have similar walks. They have some. I Mm -hmm. I like that Mm -hmm. because it showed like she wasn't just an idiot. Like, so like yeah. if they're half brothers, they're going to look similar. But what did you think about the yeah, whole like, Josh reveal? Well, at first, you know, like my dark and twisted mind was like, is he is he making it up? Is he trying to do a power play here? Like, what's going on? So like I go to the sinister. So I was like a little bit quizzical, like watching, like, let me see what you do here. But then like when I found out like it was le- like legitimate and he had cancer and he really was trying to make amends, then I went back and said, oh, this is why he's been reaching out to, to Pacey. This is why he's been trying to make amends. And I was really proud of Josh, like to be able to say like, I was an asshole. And because I was faced with death, I realized that there was no one to mourn me if something did happen to me. And basically like, I didn't want that to be my life. And so I realized I've got some work to do. You know, and even though he tried to, he recognized and saw that they were together, he didn't try and like steal her back. He really Mm -hmm. honestly was like, I was not a good guy and I need to do better. And I know that that's going to take time. And so the way that he handled it, and even when Pacey did finally call him back and have that conversation at the behest of his teammates, you know, he was able to put aside his stuff and say like, okay, like, I hear you. I'm not willing to like be all like, let's do ring around the rosies right now. But like, you know, I'm hearing you. And so I thought it was really mature and I thought it was handled really well. And I really loved it because, and that's why I say, I want to hear Josh's story because he was able to do that arc. I want to hear him have his HEA and what that looks like and to see his whole journey and see why, because there's always a backstory as to why people do what they do. So I'm sure his backstory is going to be very interesting in terms of, his justification, if you will, for why he became an asshole and what happened to him and then how he sort of is, if you will, his road to redemption. Yeah, and I think, to me, I immediately forgave him after that conversation that he had with Winnie. I was like, when he, it was a moment when he said, you were going through the same issues with your mother. I was not going to tell you at that time because I knew you would stop everything. Mm. to help us both and it's true like she would have and so like that's what her journey is like post her mother's death trying to figure out how to restart her whole life and like if and if josh told her told her that news i get it like i get where he was going with it it was misguided Mm. but i think it's almost like he his actions really mirror pacey's and you can really tell that they are half brothers they're very quick to anger and pushing people away when they think they have some troubling news because you have Pacey when he went to the doctor and he hadn't heard back after he had all those tests yeah. and his reaction to Winnie 
and that's what led to their fight. So I like how you get those similarities between those two brothers. Oh, that's an interesting assessment. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I hadn't thought about that. So I think it's like, that's why I just like, man, Megan, like this is stuff you don't normally see in a lot of romances. They would usually make Josh the bad guy. Like you said, trying to make a play for the heroine. Even Josh, it was like a little moment. He mentions to Pacey, don't keep secrets from winning. He did. He did. He did. And like, I was wondering, like, okay, is Josh going to mention it? Is he going to mention to Winnie that, like, yeah. they're half-brothers? Yeah. And never. Oh. I was like, I was so, I had so much kudos for him because he's like, right. with the love of my life, I messed up. That's and even me. Winnie's response and how she handled it when she closed that chapter, she was like, I forgive you, but I'm on to the next chapter. I was like, that is so realistic how it was handled. It was, and it was refreshing, right? Because it's like when you do all the the backstabbing and the lying and I'm lying on one end, even like when Josh, or or, I'm sorry, not Josh, when um, Pacey got upset because he's like, you've been texting him and you've been lying to me. And she's like, have it ever occurred to you that I didn't share this with you because I didn't want to put more on you because you're already dealing with so much. Like, to me, that's a legitimate reason to like, mm-hmm. you know, there's sometimes you keep things back, not because you want to lie or be deceitful. It's just because I don't want to put more stress on you. When the time is right, I'll go ahead and do that. And so, but again, the way that they handled things and then the way that they came back from those misunderstandings was really refreshing. And it's like a breath of fresh air in terms of like, you know, the typical romance genre in terms of like conflict and angst and how that all mm-hmm. is handled. This was like really, it was, it was a pleasant surprise because I was like thinking, I don't know, this is going to be sugary. And it wasn't, it had lots of layer to it. So I was, mm-hmm. I, I'm happy. I'm happy. Even though they're, even their fight, like I love a good third act breakup when it's done right. Yeah. Cause like the emotions are there. And like, when you feel that betrayal or whatever happens, I'm like, Ooh, I'm like, that's inter- That's a good conflict. And I love their fight. Just like how Winnie handles it. Yeah. And she brings up a lot of great points. She's just like, like you mentioned before, I don't want to burden you with this, but it's also none of his business. Like she was in a long-term relationship with Josh. Three years. I was like, and Pacey, you have no leg to stand on since that is your half brother. True. Because he recognized that probably 20% all the it. way he, through the book. Yeah, he, he kept throughout it. Throughout the he entire book. He should have, he should have fessed up and he did not. He was just like, he kept that tight to the chest. So that was on yeah. him. And I love how Winnie, her main complaint in that argument was the trust. Yeah. Where's the trust? And I'm like, I got that immediately. And I was like, ooh. I was like, that is true. I'm like, that is so true. I'm like, and it was foreshadowed so like lightly. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even Pacey who fessed up. It was Winnie who figured it out. And she was just like, wait, how do you, like when she said, how do you know how, how do you know how Josh looks? Yeah. And like, that was like, I was like, you're that done. Was like, bro. Cats, cats out of the bag. Now you're going to have to like, you know, you can't pass the buck on from here, you know, for sure. Yeah. And I liked after, after it was all discovered and she was like, I'm out, you know, and they, and he sat down with his teammates and his friends and they really said, listen, you know, that she was nervous about how fast, because even though we said this was slow burn in the timeline of the book, this all it's happened fast. super, super fast, like over like, I don't know, a couple of weeks or whatever that they got really in depth and really close. And that kind of scared her. And so she wanted to take a step back and reevaluate. And so when all this, that third act conflict happened, his teammates and friends were like, you know what, you need to woo her and you need to get to know her. And if you're serious, you know, he's like, well, that's going to take too long. And they're like, the best things come to those who wait. So you have to put the investment and the time. And so I liked how they developed a relationship over first texting, then phone calls, then FaceTime and having a standing date each week over FaceTime that she was looking forward to. And he basically waited it out and wooed her until she got to the point where she was like, I miss you. And then he was like, now the time is right. And that's when he went back. And they don't say in the context of the timeline in the book, how long that took, but he really did take his time to, and it wasn't groveling per se, because he didn't really have that much to grovel for, yeah. aside from like saying like, I'm sorry, and I shouldn't have done that. And I won't repeat that. But it's like, let's take time to see how valuable and important this relationship is to us and what we're willing to do to commit to it and make it work. 
And I thought that was awesome. And I love too how her friends, even Catherine came around in the end. It was really Max that was like, hey, you realize that you've been doing X, Y, Z with Pacey. I'm like, I love how her friends had to give her that final push. I'm like, it's yeah. okay. Like yeah. he, he took the time, he sent you food, gifts, and mm-hmm. like really wooed her. I was like, I like that. But also my mind was like, okay, I want steam. I want steam. I want steam. I want steam. But this is like one instance where the story didn't need that much steam because of the characters. So I was like, okay. So like, that's like brings me to like our, the, I guess like the final, like our final ratings on this book. That was a bad transition. But no, what no. do you rate this book out of one out of five stars? Yeah, and I was, I'm, I, I feel like you're going to give it a 4.5 or four. So, so, like, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you don't know what I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to give it a four star. I oscillated between like a 4.5 and a four. And I, I'm giving it a four because of the, like the slow burn. It took so long to kind of get to the steam and like, you know what I mean? Like, and maybe it needed to be that way after we said, like in the timeline of the book, it actually happened quite quickly. But for my taste to catch my attention, I needed it to have just a tad more angst and a tad more steam. And that would have kicked it right on up. But a four is a solid rating in my book. It's still definitely a read worthy book. So what did you what think? Do you, what, what do you think I rated it? I think that you gave it a five. Close. I gave it 4.5. 4.5? Yeah. Because I realized, like, if I thought of it as a standalone, it's a four. But if I look at it as, like, a series starter, it's a five. It's a five. So then I just took the difference and 4.5. Thank you again, Taji, so much for coming on my channel. I will link her channel down below so you guys can definitely go give her a follow. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys with a brand new video. Peace.